Invite a Budget Blind Style Consultant to show you how to transform your rooms just by changing your window coverings. Canada's number one choice for window coverings. Visit budgetblinds.ca today. And welcome back. It was Championship Sunday out in Dewberry for the second stop in the Young CPCA season. After day one, it was Chris Molly in first place. But before we can get to today's results, let's take a look at yesterday's. And no, that is not an error. Somebody has finally beat Chris Molly. BJ Carey, he came to race on Sunday, taking the day money on night two. Jamie Labacane's non-point non outfit rather came in second place, and there he is. Molly came in third, also with his non-point outfit. And the two... The final two spots were just separated by a one hundredth of a second. Todd Baptiste just edged out Labacane's point out wagon. Let's take a look at the aggregate for two days. And BJ Carey and Big Guys Enterprises are currently in first. Jamie Labacane's non-point outfit is second. Chris Molly's point outfit is third, followed by Labacane's point outfit at fourth. And Molly's non-point outfit is fifth going into Championship Sunday. And the big man BJ Carey was trying to hold on and win day day three and the show, but we were going to see because he might not have done that. Let's take a look at the highlights. And there he is, the big man BJ Carey. He is the man to beat. He will be coming out of the three barrel. And as you can see here, just as the horn is about to sound, they are off. And not the start BJ wanted as his wagon will run over that top barrel and that is going to cost him five seconds. And as you can see, the horses come out here. There's two horse wagons there and we'll get them coming out on the outfield and it still looks like there's only two. Yes, Bob Van Eaton's horse is lying on the ground here due to the lines getting tangled up. So fortunately, there was no error occurred on the horse and after losing day money, Chris Molly was not ready to uh, pull that over and he was looking to get that back. Look at him shot out of the infield like a cannon. And he's going to leave everybody in the dust and nobody even caught him throughout the whole race. He won it wire to wire. What a great run for Molly. Now we're going to move on to the final heat of the night. It's Molly, Labacane and the Chief Ray Mitsuing all lining up to see if one of these guys can maybe outrun BJ Carey. And as Mitsuing here as we're approaching the final turn, it's Mitsuing followed closely behind by Labacane. And Jamie is able to just make a last ditch effort and pass him as he's coming down. And he will win the Dewberry Show. Let's go get post game with the winner. Oh, the board rather, sorry. After not winning day money, Chris Molly wasn't going to let that happen again as his non-point outfit won the fastest time on Championship Day Sunday. Labacane is, is where he was all weekend rather in second place. And two names today, Lane Bremner and, uh, had a great run coming in third and Dewberry's own Dallas Dick came in fourth. Great showing there in front of the hometown crowd. And also Todd Baptiste rounded out the top five. And even though he didn't get the day money, Jamie Labacane won the aggregate for the three days and he wins the buckle for the Dewberry Show. With his non-point outfit rather, Chris Molly came in second also with his non-point outfit and Labacane and Molly's point outfits came in third and fourth respectively. Todd Baptiste of Kando, Saskatchewan rounded out the top five. We will now go and get post from the winner, Jamie Labacane. I got tired of looking at the back of Chris Molly's wagon last weekend, so I was uh, really, you know, jockeying on, uh, you know, turning a little bit better, getting some better starts together, and holding holding that guy off, and uh, you know, managed to do that two nights. So that was a that was a good thing, and managed to jump ahead in points. Every time you win a new one, I think it's a little gets a little more special, and just happy with the way that my outfits are performing already. I don't think they're quite at the top of their game yet, but they're starting to really gel together and work and um, expecting big things from this year. Just hopefully they stay sound and keep going the way they are. And after a weekend at home, the Perry Pirates were back on the road today for two games. In game one, they were taken on the first place Munster Red Sox. The Pirates had a close one here with the Red Sox, dropping the game four to three. Caden Zacharias had a great day at the plate, going two for four with an RBI and he also scored a run. Dalton Spence and Sam Soshiki got the other RBIs for the Pirates. Blake Robertson pitched six innings, giving up four runs, all of them earned, and he struck out four. Moving on to the second game, and they came, the Bucks come out on top against the Regina Athletics. Spence continued to produce as he drove in three runs. Jared Coghill went two for three at the dish, including a solo home run. It was his second home run of the season. Clark Thompson got the win, throwing six innings with three Ks, and Jared Coghill came in the seventh inning to close out the game by striking out the side. The Black and Yellow are back at home next weekend with two games against the Regina Expos and then another two against the Red Sox. Also, the AA Pirates were in Humboldt today for two games. 
They dropped Game 1 6-5 after giving up a walk-off home run in the bottom of the 7th. They also dropped the second game 8-3. The AA Pirates are back at home Wednesday against the North Battleford Beavers. And after dropping the first two games on the weekend, the Lloydminster Extreme were back in action this afternoon taking on the Edmonton Warriors. These two teams met last month and the Warriors won 9-5. However, the Extreme would win this one. It was a back and forth game according to Graham Murray, but the Extreme dominated the third period and won the game. Captain Brendan Peterson scored a hat-trick and Braden Ledke also lit the lamp three times. The Extreme are back in action this Sunday in Cold Lake against the Lakeland Heat. And after their game on Friday was, uh, was cancelled due to a forfeit, the Roar were in Westlock taking on the Rock. The two teams met two weeks ago in Vermilion with the Roar winning that game. However, the Rock would take this one in their own barn. And we have some bad news for the Roar as leading scorer Kagan Bowman left today's game with an injury and did not return. Also, Chase Carlson was ejected during the game, so the Roar they kind of had a short bench. But the Roar have a short break and will have to forget about this loss as they host the Lakeland Heat on Wednesday in Vermilion. And we usually bring you lots of stories about local athletes who make it big in their respective sports, especially hockey. But one local athlete is making her mark in another sport. Madison Blaine is a local volleyball player who has been selected to play for the Saskatchewan U16 Provincial Team, something not many local players have been able to do. This is the first year I went to any of the ID camps and then I got invited back and then I was final tryouts and I made the team. But yeah, I didn't even know that this existed. <laughs> team Sask holds four ID camps and then selects a top 50 and finalizes their roster at 24 and Blaine was able to impress the coaches and crack the squad. Feels good. I, Yeah, I don't know. There was only two of us that got invited back and I was the only one that made it. So feels good. <laughs> Blaine might not get as much playing time as she is one of the younger players on the team. Listening to the coaches I think will really up my game. Um, yeah, they're really good coaches and I think that like the amount of practice that we do and then the high level competition that'll be in Richmond will be really like encouraging and stuff. Right. She will have the chance to play again next year as she is only 15 years old. Even though she made the team this season, Madison knows it's not guaranteed that she will make next year's team. Yeah, I, I guess so. It gives me like a better opportunity for next year and so I'm a returning player so then I'll hopefully get a chance next year but it doesn't mean that I'm automatically on the team. I'm still going to have to work. Making this team will give Blaine the experience and drive to pursue her goals in volleyball. I want to make the senior team for the comp for high school and hopefully university or maybe even a scholarship. Blaine has a lot of people to thank for helping her become the player she is today. I didn't just wake up and be good at volleyball. I like practiced and had awesome coaches and really good teammates that helped me get here. Now that Blaine has made the team, she travels to Regina every weekend for training. When school is out, the training intensifies with five-day training camps in Saskatoon as the team gets ready for the NTCC tournament in Richmond in July.